Hello, in this video I'll be going over how I created my own window manager in Rust. And this is really a supplement to this blog post that I wrote on creating a simple window manager in Python. So I recommend reading this blog post and then you'll understand all the basics. Like what is a windowing system? What is a window? Or what is the X window system that this, that my window manager you're currently looking at is actually using? So this blog post explains all of that and also gets you up to date on, you know, creating your own in Python. Let's go over how I actually implemented mine in Rust because it's a little bit more complicated. It uses things like the extended window manager hints spec. And this spec allows your window manager, which is basically, you know, a program all about geometry on your screen, like organizing windows. How should they be organized on your screen? Let's say you have a window that is a status bar. Because you know, everything you see on the screen right now is a window. So this status bar is its own program that creates a window. How does the window manager actually organize that? Well, this status bar sets a window type on through extended window manager hints. And that type will be of a dot. Then the window manager takes that into account. Well, we need to preserve some extra space up here for the dot when we're organizing the windows like this. And then also when you know when you're creating windows the if you want to tile it it's like you know we want basically this half of the screen be our main window and then stack all the other rest of the windows currently active in this workspace on the right side that's basically what all a window manager does it's not too complicated let's go into how i actually implemented mine if you look in the my window manager github and i'll link this in the description if you look at the main file thing you should look at ignore the stuff right here this is just for debugging is this window manager new and then run. So this runs the window manager struct. And this is the thing that takes care of events as they come in from the X server. So it hooks into the X server and says, hey, send all the events to me. So I'll just go through this explaining. It. First is that the window manager struct keeps a track of all the clients that are open. So like you'll have, let's say you're running GIMP that will create a client on the server. The window manager will see that event and then it will register that client into this client's uh, parameter in this window manager struct. And then the config, that's just for, you know, various things like if you press control S, open a window and so on. Connection, the X protocol is something that goes over the network. You actually connect to the X server to send and receive events over a network. So that's why it's called a connection. And then the cursor is just, you know, your mouse cursor like this. So the window manager could actually set whatever cursor you want. In this case, I just set it to the default cursor when the window manager run. When you actually initialize this with new, it creates a connection and then it creates a connection from the XCB, which is, you know, that library that I mentioned in the article. And that basically defines how to send events to the server and receive events. We create this extended window manager hint connection from that connection, which gives us access to all the things mentioned in this spec. Like, like I said, window type, or if a window, what's the window name? Like up here, you can see this is Firefox. So this is how I actually receive that name is through this spec. Create a connection. And then we just initialize everything else. We set that on the struct and then we run it. If you have multiple screens, then you can do something, uh, you know, you can get individual screens. So in this case, it just gets the first screen available and then it sets what we support of all of these things. So we need to tell all the windows like, hey, we support net active window or we support net desktop names and so on. So that's what we say here. We say, you know, we support active window, client list, current desktop and so on. Then we actually want to create a window and this window is used for the other windows checking to see like what the window manager supports. And then also, let's say you're running like NeoFetch, I think. And this, okay, well, it doesn't do it here. But basically like some programs want to see what the window manager is called. So in this case, we do set window manager name and then call it my window manager. And also uh, other windows like Firefox, let's say you're running Firefox, they want to check if the window manager supports full screen. Like we need to tell the window manager, hey, we want to full screen our window. That's what Firefox does when you're, you know, watching a YouTube video, then click full screen. Well, the window manager needs to know that and then actually full screen the video. We actually set that on this window that is then used by other clients and programs to see what it supports. So that's what this is doing. And then we basically run through the commands that we define in our config. 
along with the actions, and then we grab the key. And if we actually look at what that does, it basically sends a, a notification to the X server. I'm gonna like get some of the terms improper in this video. I know people can correct me in the comments if you want, but basically it sends something to the server saying, hey, if the user types in this combination, then send an event back to us telling us that happened. And then we can hook into that and say, hey, when we get the you know user press control S, then do this action. So that's what grabbing the key does. Continuing on, we then also want to you know grab all the keys for the workspace. So like when I press control one, we want to switch to the first workspace. When I press control two, switch to the second workspace and so on. And that's why we grab all the keys for one through nine numbers on your keyboard. Then we also set through the extend window manager hence the number of desktops we want. So in my case, I want one through nine. So I set zero and then nine as the maximum. And then we also want to set the current desktop, which is how you know the window manager knows like, hey, I'm on desktop two, so show all the clients that are currently on desktop two. But let's say I press like control one, then we later on, I'll show you this, we actually set current desktop to whatever number I press from up here. Then this gets to the more tricky part. We have to tell the X server that we want to receive certain events. And so what this does is we say to the window manager, we want the substructure redirect, meaning redirect all the events about window changing, like the create event or like modify or map or so on, unmap, send all of those to this window manager. And only one, one window manager at a time can be running. So that's why we do this check. If another window manager is already running and has requested this redirect, then it will fail to actually change that attribute and send back an error. Then we just run through and launch some programs. So like the status bar, that's its own program. Application launcher, this is its own program. So we need to go through and actually run those and create those new programs that's specified in the config. Then we also just set the default cursor, which isn't set. So like, let's say you launch a window manager without setting your cursor, then sometimes with it, it'll just be blank or the default cursor, which is just like kind of a weird looking cursor. Then I basically just loop through and start waiting for events to come in through the through the X server. So that's what this self.con.wait for event, this waits for an event to come in from the X server. Then when an event does come in, we spawn a new task because this is multi-threaded and say handle this event with by with these clients, this config and this connection. And that's what this function does. So the first thing we do is we get the response type and this is because there's certain things like, I'm trying to remember, it's like on client message that actually add to the um, response type. And so we do this bitwise to account for that to actually get the true response type. Then later on, I think it is the client message, can access the response type and get additional information from it. I might be wrong in that. I'm kind of blanking on why that is, but I believe that is the case. So then we get the response type and we go through this match and we check which event type it actually is or which response type it is and then we call this handler you know on client message if it's a client message key press on key press if that's the case if we want to look at what this does basically calls a list of plugins and for each of these it loops through the plugins and then it calls that callback on each plugin passing the event to it and these plugins are things like you know window sizer so when a new window comes in if we want to look at the window sizer let's say we map a window meaning we only want to display it well then we need to resize all the different all the different windows on our screen because all of a sudden these these become different sizes and remember it's all about geometry on your screen so we need to resize the master window and then also all these uh you know, secondary windows on this right side. And so that's why we need to plug into the map request. And same with the unmap. Then the property notify, there are basically atoms which allow you to do, give additional context in each event. So in this case, we get a window manager struct partial. So we can probably just look up what this does. Struct partial. This happens if a window wants to preserve some screen at some space at the edge of the screen. So you know, like the status bar window right here, this wants to preserve some space up at the top, right? So it would send a window manager struct partial to our window manager. We would receive it here and then we would resize because, 
you know, then we need to re we need to take into account that a window has reserved some space, meaning we need to resize everything, accounting for that new extra space. And then uh, it's really just a matter of going through all these plugins and kind of explaining what they do. Let me look and see if there's any good ones. So commands, you know, we just check if the event coming in, if it's a key press, we want to check which key it is that the user has pressed. So we get the key code, and that's one thing to note in this blog post. I explain like what key codes are, what key sims are, so on, and why that actually why we do it that way. So if you want to get more details, look at that. Then we check if that key code matches. If it does, then we just launch the window or watch launch the application that matches from the config with that key code. That's pretty much all that does. Configuring a window. So this is let's say you you're a you're Firefox and you want to maximize a window. You want to maximize your window to show a video in full screen. Then what it does is it sends a client message to the window manager and the client message is something from this extended window manager spec saying, hey, tell the window manager to full screen this window. Well, then we receive it here. We check if it's added. If it's a state add, that means we want to full screen it, else we want to unfull screen it. So then we just handle it. We uh, gloop through our clients. We find the proper client, which matches you know, that Firefox example. Then we full screen that client. So that's what that does. The configure request, Windows can, you know, let's say you, you are GIMP. Let's actually just open GIMP. So GIMP has several kinds of Windows. Like if you do a file new, then, you know, this is a certain size, right? So this is a window on top of the main window, and we need to account for when that happens. So in that case, when that actually happens, it will set a window height and a window config or window width, and it might set, you know, other attributes on that, on that window on that GIMP client. So in that case, we need to set that data from the X server onto our uh, client struct so we can keep track of that and then display it properly when we're actually computing the geometry of, of the screen. So that's what this does. And um, transient windows, that's basically, same with uh, dialogues, that's what that um, file knew. So this is a dialog and it's also, I believe, transient, which means we, we don't want to keep it in the stack. The stack meaning like, see how these windows are stacked on top of each other? So a transient window, we don't want to do that. We just want to let it map itself like like new window, like this. Then we just recall configure window, uh, telling the window manager, like maybe we have overridden something. Then we just send back that configure window to, to the X server. Destroy window, this basically, when we receive a destroy request, we just take the client outside um, and get rid of it. <laughs> okay, map window, this basically means we want to show the window onto the screen. Then the... And this is the first request we might get, so we want to try to create it, and this will create it if it doesn't exist, then we try to show it. And the override redirect, that means a window telling the window manager to not manage it, meaning, you know, don't put us in the window stack, don't do anything to us, just ignore us. So if that's the case, then we just return okay and ignore that window. Unmap window, that basically, it's not destroying the window, it's just hiding the window temporarily. Window selector. In the window selector, we might want to like switch between windows using the Vim key bindings like J or K to switch between windows. And to do that, we need to listen for events. So that's why in this on key press for this window selector, we listen for key events. And if it does, we tell the window handle this action of pressing J or pressing K. In that case, it'll move the active window. And then we also want to listen for enter notify. So in this case, see how I switch can switch between windows like that? Then we need to listen for that event um, and set the active window. The window sizer, this basically just listens for events that would change the window size, like mapping requests that will change the window size or you know property notify that will also change it, which I already explained in the previously. Uh, workspaces, this is for 
you know, creating workspaces one, two, three, four, and so on. And we need to listen for key events if the person wants to change a workspace or if a client sets a new workspace, then we need to set it up there. And that's basically just all what this does. Let's get into the client, which is more of, uh, you know, how each client's work. When we're creating clients, we receive that create request and we want to map a window. So we just check if it's already created. If it's already created, we ignore it. And then we also get the type of the window. If it's a doc, then we set that in our window manager as the doc window. And that means it'll get mapped up here at the top. And if it's a dialog, then we just allow it to control itself and map itself where it wants. Then we basically just you know check if it has any padding and um, then just push it to the client list. Then we also map the window and do some resizing of the window right here. Also, we add a border to it. Then we set it to be the active window. This handle action function is something that you saw previously. We handle actions like, let's say you want to delete a window, then you'll send a delete window over the extended window manager hints. This handles all of those along with certain other ones like selecting uh, a new window. Like let's say I want to select a window on the right, then I can do K or let's say I want to go back, then I can do J and so on. So that's what this handles the or are those actions. Uh, basically, we just check, you know, if it's a delete action, then we do the proper shutdown and send a client message to that window saying, hey, shut yourself down cleanly and then exit. And then if it doesn't support that, then we just kill the window and exit. Also, so if it's one of those cases where it's J or K or move or something like that, then we check if we want to select above or select below basically get the new position of the active window, and then we set the new position on the set active window. If it's a action of resizing, like sometimes we want to uh, resize, like shrink the main window or increase it. So those are actions too. And to do that, we get the current offset, and then we increase it by 5% or we decrease it by 5% then we just resize all the windows. How does a client resize itself? Well, we basically just get you know screen size, screen width, border double, if we have gaps and so on. And we take all of that into account looping through the events. And we basically say like the window, if it's you know the third window that's not active, then it will be like, you know, in the middle of the screen right here. So we need to, you know, give it an offset of one window up here and then also take into account the border and the gap and then basically draw it right here. Then we also call disable event mask. This basically gives it time to remap itself and uh, ignoring certain events that happen when you're remapping because you're reorganizing all these windows. So like an enter event might fire accidentally when you're reorganizing windows. So we just want to ignore that while we're actually reorganizing it. And that's what that does. And same with, uh, you know, workspaces. We just have a set window workspace if you're switching between it. Basically all these are just helpers for what you saw in those plugins. Certain clients like the status bar need to know a list of the clients. That way, you know, it can map. There's two windows and and workspace four. So to do that, we have to set a list of clients on the extended window manager hint client list. So that's what we do when we refresh clients. And we refresh clients whenever we map a window or destroy a window or so on. Th uh, this file events, this basically makes it safe for events to send over threads. And um, that's just something unique to Rust. It's not really anything interesting. That's a quick overview of my window manager. It took me a long time to really comprehend these ideas. So don't worry if it takes you a bit. The main thing is just to keep, keep at it and keep trying to understand it and it will click eventually. It definitely took me a while, but it did for me. So look at this blog post, look at the code. That's the most important thing is looking at the code, actually understanding it. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. Thank you for watching.